So now that this section of fence is all stretched, six wires, we have this section of fence that we, we need to connect the two. So that means we need a trench line that goes underneath the gate into the ground and up on this side of the fence. But I have a tool, guys. A tool, look at this. You slip this right over there. My story stick. I'm gonna go, it's about seven inches. I mean, I wasn't sure what to do. I just said, oh, seven inches looks good. I'm gonna do that all along where I have woven wire here and hopefully get it to a point where I can at least charge that certain section as I go. I'm almost there. Now keep in mind that this line is gonna be hot. It's gonna be energized. And I've seen some other farms where instead of it being energized, they might put barbed wire, something so the steers can't look over and eventually bend your fence or ruin it. Also, I wanna be able to tie into this hot wire so that way I can tie that into some of our nettings that we use. So this spot, this is harder than what I thought. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be super soft, but um, because the uh, when it rains really good, it puddles up right here and it turns to mud. But it's actually hard. We just installed this line and this line we're gonna attach from here and that's what we're gonna trench to attach to the other gate. So you're looking at about 14 feet and this is going to be the main point where the electricity when we energize the fence is going to come through and come in and connect to this and then that's going to go all the way around the pasture. So can you step it on right there? Just Yeah, just leave excess. And then we're gonna bring that down. This is just some black poly pipe. And we gotta make sure there's plenty of excess just in case. So now we gotta shimmy it through there. This pipe's about a half inch. Oh, there it is. All right. Like this? Yeah. And then out this way? Yeah. And then just, that's just it? Just go straight up with it. Really go straight because it's curved. Well, yeah, yeah. And then we got it coming up. All right. Or actually, wait. Now I'm thinking, what if we put it so that way it'll hold better? Put it through there. Okay. Can so take it all out. Yeah, just pull it because it wants to go this way and I can't. Yeah, it like wants to go that way. Alright, so we went up here. Now we're covering it back up. It goes in between the woven wire. It's gonna end there. And then I need to silicone or cover this hole a little bit. So it doesn't get rain on. And then we have 
this underground wire that comes out and then we're going to end up connecting it to here. Remind me to close up the greenhouse as much as I can. Maybe I'll put like a blanket over it. So we're closing up shop. Now we're doing the same thing on this side. We're gonna, except we're gonna go in between here just to make it look a little nicer. We're gonna end this pipe here so that way we can connect to the bottom. Uh, so we don't necessarily have to bring it all the way up top because these are all gonna be kind of daisy chained, connected. So we had too much pipe, too much wire. Mm -hmm. Right here or down more? Right there. Right here? Right there. And then cut all Just the keep way? going, yeah. All the way? Yep. Through? Yep. Uh, here. We need to measure it here. Look. We got plenty. Yeah, we have plenty. <laughs> <laughs> we thought... I know, I was telling you, yeah, cut it, cut it, cut it. And I, we almost cut this wire off. Totally off. But, um, yeah. Okay, so we can, we can <laughs> cut this wire here. I do think this is still too long. I think we could cut this shorter so that way this wire inside could bend. All right, I think we got it. So that's going to be connected out here and bury that one. So I think the hardest part of that was doing the actual trench. Oh boy, this, this is exciting. Exciting stuff building fence. It's exciting because... Uh, I think I say this every day, but I feel it one step closer. So this comes up from the trench, and then we're gonna crimp this crimp sleeve that I'm used to. And then this excess piece here, we're gonna use that instead. Just slip that right over. That pipe we used for the trench, the ends, I'm going to use a sealant um, to cover it so that way rain won't get into it or bugs. I'm going to fill it up. You know, my friend Mike showed me that trick. And because initially I would think I was going to use maybe PVC or not use any pipe, just use the underground, you know, it's underground rated burial cable and just use that. Um, but I guess if you're going to be driving over it constantly, using that black pipe helps. <clears throat> so I'm going to. Now, on this side, I'm going to date, basically daisy connect, kind of like a daisy chain, all the way down using crimps. And we have this excess piece, which I'm glad I left this long. And then I have a separate wire that I'm going to fish this through. So this is what I did. Daisy chain up top. Crimp, crimp, come down. Insulator, clump, crimp. So you hit in that first one, second one, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And then this is the main coming in and hitting this and that's connecting all of these. <laughs> so now, and then over here, we're connected. So the energizer is coming from over there. It's going to charge this. And then it's going to go underground. And then it's going to charge those six wires. And then from there, once I have it all connected, it's all going to hit. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, and then the whole fence is going to be on. But technically, I could just run this section because it's already hooked up. And this should, should be on. Sorry pigs, you're not the cute ones anymore. You're not the cute ones. It's funny, this morning I saw three guinea fowl 
walking around here. They were right here by the pigs. And, uh, you know, we don't, ha we don't raise guineas. I've never raised guineas. I don't really want to raise guineas, but they're here. So they must have came from a nearby farm and I don't see them here now. So that was this morning, this afternoon. They were kind of hanging around. Uh, I even fed them some, some feed and they ate it like they were hungry, but I don't know. They probably just kind of came and went. Where's your babies at, Elvira? We want to see the babies. They're out there. There they at. They're venturing out. This one is white, black, with some brown in the black. They look, they're they looking good. I mean, the piglets are a week old now, and they've been doing fine. I mean, we still have them in the same spot, you know, trying to get through the cold. It's been cold the last few days, 30 degrees at night or so, and so kind of been putting the heat lamp on and turning it off. Like right now, we have it off, you know, they're, they're fine. Um, and she's still nursing, and yeah, they're looking pretty healthy. They're getting fat. You know, for little pigs, I'm not too worried that they're going to escape the netting. I mean, I'm pretty sure they could if they wanted to, but then they're just going to follow mom, Elvira. They're going to follow her around. So wherever she's at, they're going to pretty much stay there. Even if they do leave, they're going to come back. Uh, these broiler chickens, man, they are ready to go on grass. But I'm trying to wait. Maybe in the next few days, it's supposed to get down to the 30s. It's supposed to get frost tonight. So I'm just gonna wait a little bit. They're, they're not quite four weeks old yet. They're three weeks. And uh, you know, typically like this early in the spring, I usually wait to about four weeks. Uh, in the summer, I'll definitely put them out at three. But with the weather kind of being, you know, not sure what it wants to do. Uh, you know, better be safe and just keep them in the brooder. They are ripe, man. Ready. You guys are ready for the big time? We're supposed to get some chill tonight, so we need to cover some of the veggies that Lorraine had started already. All right, what are we doing? We're covering all these? Yeah. So what'd you do here? We've already had to um, transplant because it's time. Our, our starts are growing so big. So we got cauliflower in this bed, broccoli in this bed, Napa cabbage, and then other two other cabbages down there. So all our cabbages. They could probably handle a light frost, but I feel like I've worked so hard and I've already lost some tomatoes and peppers due to frost so i'm like i really don't want to lose anything else and i have yet to put end walls on this that's on my list well nonetheless we'll do it so that's where i'm gonna lay it This is Agrabon, and we use this to cover our bed. Oh! <laughs> Just smash some plant starts. Uh, we use this to cover our beds. And also use it for like a shade cloth too, when it's too hot. So how should we tie this on? We have some steaks. We could just stake them in the ground. Yeah. So I have some more Napa cabbages, some turnips, and some kohlrabi that already got blasted by a frost. So I might have to replant those ones anyway. I'm like kind of wrapped it around this thing and then twisted it and stuffed the steak in with my shoe.
That's it. Everybody's ready for bed. <laughs>